In science, one tries to tell people, in such a way as to be understood by everyone, something that no one ever knew before. But in poetry, it's the exact opposite. The measure of greatness in a scientific idea is the extent to which it stimulates thought and opens up new lines of research. A great deal of my work is just playing with equations and seeing what they give. Living is worthwhile if one can contribute in some small way to this endless chain of progress. There are always more people who prefer to speak than to listen. I consider that I understand an equation when I can predict the properties of its solutions without actually solving it. Pick a flower on Earth and you move the farthest star. People who equate all the different kinds of human activity to money are taking too primitive a view of things. The mathematician plays a game in which he himself invents the rules, while the physicist plays a game in which the rules are provided by nature but as time goes on, it becomes increasingly evident that the rules which the mathematician finds interesting are the same as those which nature has chosen. The successful development of science requires a proper balance to be maintained between the method of building up from observations and the method of deducing by pure reasoning from speculative assumptions. God is a mathematician of a very high order, and he used advanced mathematics in constructing the universe. It seems clear that the present quantum mechanics is not in its final form. Some further changes will be needed, just about as drastic as the changes made in passing from Bohr's orbit theory to quantum mechanics. Someday a new quantum mechanics, a relativistic one, will be discovered, in which we will not have these infinites occurring at all. It might very well be that the new quantum mechanics will have determinism in the way that Einstein wanted. Mathematics is only a tool, and one should learn to hold the physical ideas in one's mind without reference to the mathematical form. Age is, of course, a fever chill that every physicist must fear. He's better dead than living still when once he's passed his thirtieth year. The interpretation of quantum mechanics has been dealt with by many authors, and I do not want to discuss it here. I want to deal with more fundamental things. There is, in my opinion, a great similarity between the problems provided by the mysterious behavior of the atom and those provided by the present economic paradoxes confronting the world. The fundamental laws necessary for the mathematical treatment of a large part of physics and the whole of chemistry are thus completely known, and the difficulty lies only in the fact that application of these laws leads to equations that are too complex to be solved. I should like to suggest to you that the cause of all the economic troubles is that we have an economic system which tries to maintain an equality of value between two things which it would be better to recognize from the beginning as of unequal value. 
the methods of theoretical physics should be applicable to all those branches of thought in which the essential features are expressible with numbers. What makes the theory of relativity so acceptable to physicists, in spite of its going against the principle of simplicity, is its great mathematical beauty. This is a quality which cannot be defined, any more than beauty in art can be defined, but which people who study mathematics usually have no difficulty in appreciating. The research worker, in his efforts to express the fundamental laws of nature in mathematical form, should strive mainly for mathematical beauty. He should take simplicity into consideration in a subordinate way to beauty. It often happens that the requirements of simplicity and beauty are the same, but where they clash, the latter must take precedence. A theory with mathematical beauty is more likely to be correct than an ugly one that fits some experimental data. Just by studying mathematics, we can hope to make a guess at the kind of mathematics that will come into the physics of the future. If someone can hit on the right lines along which to make this development, it may lead to a future advance in which people will first discover the equations and then, after examining them, gradually learn how to apply them. My own belief is that this is a more likely line of progress than trying to guess at physical pictures. I learnt to distrust all physical concepts as the basis for a theory. Instead, one should put one's trust in a mathematical scheme, even if the scheme does not appear at first sight to be connected with physics. One should concentrate on getting interesting mathematics. I think it is the general rule that the originator of a new idea is not the most suitable person to develop it, because his fears of something going wrong are really too strong at age 69. The measure of greatness in a scientific idea is the extent to which it stimulates thought and opens up new lines of research. If you are receptive and humble, mathematics will lead you by the hand.